on March 10th, I got a word called Insanity Loosed, and I had been reading an article that Herman Cain posted, and I felt like the Lord said, Insanity is loosed. And he took me to Romans 1 to read, and I remembered something he had told me some time ago, years ago, how if people didn't get the emotional healing that they needed, they would, if they didn't repent, that they would be given over to insanity. Um, especially if they refused, you know, to get the help when it was available. And then I was thinking of all the multiple examples I'd seen in the news um, that last week, uh, saying absolutely crazy things, uh, as we see almost every night on the TV news now. And listening for what he wanted to say, I heard, every kingdom that has fallen has been preceded by insanity taking hold of leaders, and its people because they love their own way and the creature more than the creator. And then Isaiah 44, 24 to 25 says, Judah will be restored. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad the earth by myself, who frustrates the signs of the babblers and drives diviners mad who turns wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolishness, okay? And that's what we're seeing happen in um, many leaders right now. Okay, I have opened a door for you, America, through the prayers and worship of your saints, that you may be saved. Though the nation will suffer losses, you, my children, will prevail. I am the... I am the all-merciful one, though many have been deceived to think I don't exist or that I don't care through the su suppression of the truth. I am counting on my beloveds all over the world to bring in a harvest of souls despite the many antichrists that are in power at this time. Do not be dismayed no matter what happens, but know that I am on your side fighting for you and with you in this hour. Worship, worship, worship is the in the beauty of holiness, for I dwell in the midst of your praises, and you will be lifted above the maddening crowd, above the violence and hate, even in the midst of terror. A soldier never ventures out without putting on his gear and carrying his weapons, yet so many today think they're invulnerable without wearing my armor. Do not presume anything in this hour, for the enemy is seeking always whom he may devour. You who have unsafe family must be most diligent to equip them even when they don't realize yet what they are up against. Your prayers and worship, your declarations and prophecies are working changes in their lives whether you see it or not. Trust me to fight beside you and for you at all times. Sudden change is upon many nations. Bullies will be brought low. Wickedness is being judged. Ancient and modern demonic strongholds are being blown up. I am routing the enemy and breaking through the walls and chains. Stand in the heavenlies with arms raised in praise and see that the Lord is mighty. And that was the end of the word. But um, I wanted to share from Romans because the thing that really stood out to me, um, there was something that really stood out to me in this word from Romans. It's uh, Romans 1, 18 to 32. Um, also, he said, Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Okay, so Romans 1, God's wrath on unrighteousness. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven um, against all unrighteousness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Now, when I read that, suppress the truth, you know, you can read through scriptures many times and something will stand out to you at a different time. And this time it was the suppress part, like who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. And that's what we're seeing a lot of now, you know, is people who are really suppressing the truth. And um, <clears throat> suppress, it says hold in another version in Greek, but it's um, the word katecho from uh, Greek 2596 and 2192 to hold down or hold fast in various applications literally or figuratively to have hold fast keep in memory make toward possess retain seize on stay take and withhold so they withhold the truth on purpose even though 
the truth is plain to them. Okay? And it says, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their own thoughts. And, you know, one characteristic of pride is people are never thankful. And their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and the birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. It's talking about, you know, giving over to idols and worshiping demons. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which were not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, malice, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but approve of those who practice them. And when the church does that, very, very bad. So Romans 1 in the Message Bible is worth looking at because um, it says it in, in uh, very plain language. So I think, yeah, I've got time, so I'm going to say it. This is from the Message Bible. Ignoring God leads to downward spiral. But God's angry displeasure erupts as acts of human mistrust and wrongdoing and lying accumulate. As people try to put a shroud over the truth. <laughs> but the basic reality of God is plain enough. Open your eyes and there it is. By taking a long and thoughtful look at what God has created, people have always been able to see what their eyes as such can't see. Eternal power, for instance, and the mystery of his divine being. So no one has a good excuse. What happened was this. People knew God perfectly well, but when they didn't treat him like God, refusing to worship him, they trivialized themselves into silliness and confusion so that there was neither sense nor direction left in their lives. They pretended to know it all, but were illiterate regarding life. And uh, we see so much of this in videos and TV. They traded the glory of God who holds the whole world in his hands for cheap figurines you can't buy at a roadside stand or that you can buy at a roadside stand. Okay. So God said in effect, if that's what you want, that's what you get. It wasn't long before they were living in a pig pen smeared with filth, filthy inside and out. And all this because they traded the true God for a fake God. And worship the God that they made instead of the God who made them, the God we bless, the God who blesses us. Oh, yes. Worse followed. Refusing to know God, they soon didn't know how to be human either. Women didn't know how to be women. Men didn't know how to be men. Sexually confused, they abused and defiled one another. Women with women, men with men, all lust, no love. And when they paid for it, oh, how they paid for it. Emptied of God and love, godless and loveless wretches. Since they didn't bother to acknowledge God, God quit bothering them and let them run loose, and then all hell broke loose. Rampant evil, grabbing and grasping, vicious backstabbing, they made life hell on earth with their envy, wanton killing, bickering, and cheating. Look at them, mean-spirited, venomous, fork-tongued, God-bashers, bullies, swaggerers, insufferable windbags. <laughs> they keep inventing new ways of wrecking lives and wrecking all of our lives. They ditch their parents even when they get their way. Stupid, slimy, cruel, cold-blooded, and it's not as if they didn't know better. They knew perfectly well they were spitting in God's face 
and they didn't care. Worse, they hand out prizes to those who do the worst things best. We've seen that in Hollywood. We've seen that in um, political leaders and in each, you know, people around us. Anyway, and one example was uh, Maryland. The they they were banning men from elections or something like that. The governor of Maryland it was weird. Anyway, at any rate, it wasn't just homosexuality. It was pedophilia that people turn to because in uh, Corinthians it talks about that, um, and it, it talks about um, men, you know, having having a love for young young boys and we see today even worse things um spirit cooking the pizza gate thing all that stuff there's such wickedness and for years people warned about the rise of witchcraft in this nation and a lot of that is due to freemasonry it's due to the roots you know in the in the country that were not good there were good roots in, the, in this nation, but there were also evil roots sown tares at the same time. So um, now things are coming to fruition because God is exposing all the wickedness because he wants to free us up. So God bless you, and I hope this blessed you. <laughs> Take care.